It's now four o'clock, and I'm really happy to invite you all to be with us this afternoon on a one hour conference in all kinds of energy, be it hydrogen, be it electric energy, be it storage in batteries, whatever we need to do together in Europe to come to a solution to have a CO2 free emission. This is our goal till 2040, 2050, we want to be neutral. And a lot is to be done until then, and we need a lot of energy also to grow. So how do we solve this? Last week we have been to Norbotten and to Westerbotten, and we looked at, for example, hybrid CO2-free steel production at the biggest windmills of Europe, the largest, 1,100. It's underground and overground storage of data. And, of course, Northwold, the biggest uh, battery factory with a large research component. So let's look into these things. We will share the information and hope that together we reach new shores. So I have here with me today Stefan Kaufmann, who will give the keynote speech. He is representing the German government on the new hydrogen strategy, which will bring probably the economy forward in a big leap. We are estimating an additional 5.4 million working places till 2050 and about 800 billion turnover yearly just with hydrogen. But to reach this goal, a lot has to be done. And then we will uh, talk to Robert Andren from the uh, Swedish Energy Agency. Then we will have our Bavarian colleague to see what Bavaria is doing, industry is doing, Professor Messerer and also what new solutions may be found already for storage, uh, which is a surprise to all of us, I'm sure. Need more research and combination uh, and cooperation. I have Dr. Rüland here. She is uh, the CEO of G German Academic Exchange to see how we can connect in research. And from Lund, we will have then Mrs. schwarz Zerger uh, to tell us more about also the European cooperation in research, but also what, what's done in Sweden in the research. So let me start with you. The floor is yours. Thank you. Excellence, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to be in Sweden today for these meetings. Today's motto could trust as well be from the coal and steel community to a hydrogen union. Despite all the human and economic challenges which COVID-19 has posed, we must not forget that climate change will remain the central global challenge in the coming decades. We must focus on revamping our energy systems and making increasing use of renewable energy. This is the only way to achieve our climate targets. First step in this process. Transportation is difficult, that is industry, maritime transport, aviation and heating. Moreover, Germany will presumably rely on energy imports, more specifically renewable energy, even in future. And we will need huge amounts of it. Green hydrogen produced in a climate neutral way using renewable energy is a promising option. Europe should not miss out on this unique opportunity. Working together, we can actively help shape the global energy sector of tomorrow. This means that we must now start working towards a green hydrogen economy, including such ambitious targets as automated serial production of electrolyzers and direct hydrogen reduction in steelworks. Technologies related to green hydrogen could become a driver of job creation in Europe, as Excellence said. We have the chance to become a global leader in an entirely new field. Green hydrogen is thus vital to breathing life into the European Green Deal and making Europe's industrial base fit for the future. Relevant funding is available. At the end of last year, the new European Commission announced its intention to encourage green investments of 1 trillion euros over the next few years under the European Green Deal. On the 21st of July, the heads of state and government adopted a proposal for the next generation EU recovery plan for Europe, including further funding of green change. The German federal government's economic stimulus package provides 9 billion euros for kicking off the hydrogen economy. Last June, the German government launched the National Hydrogen Strategy. Its focus is on green hydrogen, for only green hydrogen will be sustainable in the long run. Germany wants to become a lead market and leading supplier of hydrogen technology. 
This includes a new regulatory framework, market incentive programs, and most importantly, research and innovation. Work has always began on solutions for a green hydrogen economy. We must develop industrial scale solutions to make green hydrogen competitive quickly. Therefore, the Federal Research Ministry launched an ideas competition entitled Hydrogen Republic Germany. Its aim is to bring together the brightest minds from science and industry and develop pioneering solutions for key challenges. Scale water, electrolyzed transport solutions for green hydrogen and European system creation of water technologies. One thing is clear, many countries, especially in Asia, are aware of the potential of hydrogen technologies and are busy working in this field. We urgently need a new concept of innovation that combines the scientific excellence of our research institutions with highly innovative businesses. And this not only in Germany, but all over Europe. We need a network of all relevant stakeholders in Europe, from science, industry, civil society and politics. We will only have the cloud needed in international, international competition if we all put together. The Hydrogen Union is therefore a top priority for the German residency of the Council of the European Union. The European Commission recently presented its own ambitious strategy, which is similar to our national strategy in many respects. But it is quite clear that a European strategy will only be successful if the Commission and the Member States work together to develop a common ownership. On the other hand, purely national plans will also fail, for example, when it comes to building transport infrastructures or transport or networks for hydrogen generation and use. We need cross-cutting approaches. For this, we will take advantage of the German presidency, particularly in the area of research and innovation. Cooperating with other EU member states, we want to draft a roadmap to integrate national and European processes in research and innovation. Of course, we would be delighted to also intensify our bilateral talks with Sweden in this regard. We want Europe to lead the way into the hydrogen sector. We must all be aware that the purpose of the European Green Deal and the investments in hydrogen technologies in particular is more than just to mitigate the economic effects of the coronavirus pandemic. The aim is to ensure long-term economic growth in Europe and to actively shape an emerging market. The European Atomic Energy Community and the European Coal and Steel Community ensured Europe's technological autonomy. This must also be our goal with the European Hydrogen Union. Research and innovation are the key to this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stefan Kaufmann. And we will now see five examples, statements, but also companies in, a, in t two minutes each, small films, to present ideas and maybe also problems, because this is what we have to discuss as we want to work together. So the floor is now to the companies. Uh, I don't mention them to save time because they will, you will see in the film. Let's get started. Hello everybody, my name is Michael Staffers. I'm the CEO of Bullied and also the president of Euromator, the European industrial organization for all base metals. Uh, it's great to be able to talk to you today and I'm sure you've already been stressing the point that the, one of the biggest challenges that we have going forward is climate change. And when you talk to almost anybody how we're going to battle climate change, there's only one solution that you can find everywhere and that's electrification. Electrification is going to solve it in terms of transportation, in terms of steel production, in terms of uh, chemical production, everywhere electrification. Now, what will that entail? Well, in order to produce electricity, to store electricity, to transmit electricity, you need metals, base metals. You need copper, you need nickel, you need lead, you need zinc. The challenge for Europe today is that these metals are not produced in Europe. They're all imported. The other challenge, of course, is that in also they're imported, but we're going to need much more of these metals going forward. That means that we will need to import more. To some extent, this could you say this is not a problem, but I will argue that it is a big problem because Europe, number one, will become strategically uh, 
you know, needing other countries to have a uh, helping out that could become a challenge. It could also be a financial problem, but mainly it's a sta sustainability problem because the metals produced in Europe are typically more sustainable in almost any aspect than the metals that come from the outside. Typically, the metals in Europe have a much better CO2 footprint. Typically, the metals produced in Europe are produced according to labor laws that we can all stand behind. So with that, I would just like to summarize that we are willing to push forward together with the European Commission to get solutions to this. Metals, base metals, is really part of the solution, not part of the problem. Thank you. To step up, to do more, to go further than we've ever dared, to leave behind what we know, and to try what we must. Being sustainable is not about how we think, it's about how we act. We live in a time of great opportunity. We have to step forward and take it. There's no shortage of uh, renewable energy. As an infrastructure company, our focus is making it available when it's needed, where it's needed, and at a competitive price. Norgen Energy was formed with a purpose to lead the transition towards 100% green energy. This is a big task to be solved. We need to think new and we need to be bold. We are creating a flexible energy system, well equipped for the future, where electricity, gas and heat all can play their part. The targets are clear, set by the European Union, by the member states and uh, by the leading companies to achieve 100% green energy. At Nordion Energy we are working together with partners in mainly three areas. To increase the production of biogas and hydrogen, to enable carbon capture and storage, and to create flexibility through power to gas and gas to power. Nordion Energy enables our customers to reach their climate goals. And we work with others to make the transition to a sustainable society. The energy transition has begun. Together, we have to push it forward and keep going to achieve 100% green energy. Hi, my name is Peter Carlson. Uh, uh, I'm the CEO and founder of uh, Northvolt. We are a battery and an energy storage system as company, uh, which is, is building uh, R&D, industrialization and large scale uh, manufacturing of, of battery cells and, and, and systems. I'm standing here in front of uh, uh, our new recycling uh, uh, production process here in Westeros, where we're actually building the, uh, the first recycling plant in Europe that is not only recycling nickel, cobalt, and, and uh, aluminum and, and copper, but it's also recycling uh, 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 lithium uh, according to, to uh, uh, hydro metallurgical process. Great uh, to be part of this uh, uh, group of, of companies who is uh, uh, re-engineering Europe. The world of energy stands on the brink of a monumental change. Green hydrogen is the fuel of the future. Both Germany and the rest of the European Union have realized this potential and are investing billions to achieve it. We believe that today's hydrogen production processes are not living up to the full potential in terms of product, cost and emission. But what if I told you that it's actually a solution to create pure green hydrogen made out of waste at a fraction of the cost with attractive financial returns and while still improving the environment. This solution is called the patented Plagassi process. So how does it actually work? Well, the basis of the Plagassi process is the plasma gasification of any type of waste. In other words, waste is fed into a plasma reactor where it's exposed to temperatures above 3000 degrees Celsius. At this level of heat, the waste is broken down to its atomic level. 
and then rebuilt to create hydrogen. The excess energy from the reaction is later converted into electricity and recycled within the process. The final step is to improve the hydrogen ratio in the end product and to liquefy the carbon dioxide so that it can be captured for future reusage or storage. You might ask yourselves, this sounds great, but does it actually work? The answer to that is yes. This process has been run for the last decade with solid results. But who are we? We have been building our hydrogen expertise while the industry has been sleeping over the last two decades. And together we have more than 100 years of experience learning from one of the key players in the Nordic industries called AGA. And now we are ready to accelerate the green hydrogen revolution across Europe. Could this be the answer to South Africa's energy crisis? A new hydrogen fuel cell system is now solely powering a COVID-19 filled hospital. And government, well, they plan to roll out this clean energy technology to more areas quite soon. Renewable energy is the way forward to a zero emission future. Hydrogen and fuel cells enable the use of green energy wherever and whenever it is needed, offering true zero emission. Thanks to the ability to store and transport energy, the volatility of energy sources like sun and wind are no longer a problem. The best news is that our solutions are based on existing infrastructure and technology. Together with our partners, we are already running hydrogen fuel cell solutions in a wide range of applications. Anywhere there is a need to reduce emission, there is a potential to take advantage of hydrogen's fantastic ability to store and transport energy. At PowerCell, we have over 25 years of experience in fuel cell development. Today, we offer the most modern fuel cell solutions. High power output, compact, robust, and always scalable. Through collaboration with a number of strategic partners, our solutions are already successfully implemented in a broad range of zero emission applications worldwide. Together, we will make it happen. RWE Renewables is one of the world's leading players in renewable energy production and we are number two in offshore wind. We would like to further grow through innovative technologies and invest into offshore wind globally, especially in Europe and Sweden is one of our core markets. In Sweden, we have already prepared the ground for further growth in onshore and offshore wind. In onshore wind, we are involved in operations of 10 of those onshore wind farms and we are currently constructing three more onshore wind farms. But let me focus today on offshore wind. In Karaham, on the island of Öland, we are operating one of two offshore wind farms currently in operations with a great team. And the wind farm is in operation since 2013 and is exceeding our expectations. In Malmö, we have a great development team that is developing future offshore wind farms and the most important one is Sjödra Mitzjebanken, a 1.6 gigawatt project that will deliver sustainable energy for 1.3 million Swedish households. Sweden is already a front runner in renewable energy production and will continue leading this trend with the target of being 100% on renewable energies by 2040. This fits very nicely with the announced Green Deal by the European Union. Offshore wind has undergone a fast development in the past decade and it will further continue to implement new technologies and innovations. It has a great potential to help Sweden further grow their renewable energy production where energy is needed. We are therefore looking very much forward to help Sweden realizing their offshore ambitions, enabling all of us to create a sustainable future. Offshore is great, let's make it happen.
At the gas turbine manufacturing plant at Siemens Energy in Finspong, we have a gas turbine testing center to test gas turbines before they are delivered to our customers. The gas turbines are fueled with natural gas and biogas. They generate a huge peak of electricity during the tests that is fed into the national electrical grid. But the excess power is not utilized and we want to change that. This facility will become the core of our demonstrator plant. We start with the installation of solar panels for a renewable but volatile power source, the sun. Next, we add an electrolyzer to produce green hydrogen from solar energy and from the excess power of the gas turbine delivery tests. We can then store the hydrogen and feed it back into the plant as gas turbine fuel when we need it for the next test. To increase the reliability of our energy system, we include batteries for additional storage. The end solution will be a smart microgrid that demonstrates how a future energy system for a sustainable community could work. The plant will be put into operation in 2021. It will reduce the CO2 footprint of the gas turbine facility, as well as the local community, and help reach Siemens Energy's target to run gas turbines on 100% hydrogen no later than 2030. It will also help to prove that the concept works on a larger scale. We hope to inspire industry and society and boost global efforts to decarbonize. So we have seen a few examples and there are plenty more. It's just to inspire our discussion. And I'm now happy to ask Robert to continue. Thank you so much and thank you for the invitation, Ambassador. Uh, I'm fairly proud, actually, um, having watched the movies, the short movies, of what <laughs> is happening in Sweden, with Swedish companies and actors. Uh, I would like to also say that Swed the Swedish Energy Agency is by far the biggest public financer of research and innovation uh, in energy and energy techniques. Uh, and I think that we are playing uh, quite an important role, actually. We have supported many of the companies we've seen here today uh, at various early stages of their development of techniques and their business models. Um, and of course, we are uh, taking our part, point of departure, the, the Swedish uh, uh, energy and climate goals decided by Parliament, of course. As you heard, it's 100% renewable energy system by 2040, zero, uh, uh, zero emissions by 2045, and also then 50% more energy efficient 2030 compared to 20, 2005. Um, it's quite exciting times. Um, it's so much is happening uh, when in the energy sector or around the world. Uh, and I think that what we need to do now is to uh, promote and push to make it happen quicker than before. So it's not only about restarting, it's also about continuing what has actually started some years ago. So we don't lose, we, we need to keep two th um, thoughts in our heads at the same time. Uh, that is nudging and also continuing uh, what is ongoing. Um, let me also say that it's exciting times for us because we are waiting for the government bill for the budget for the next year for, for, for Sweden. And I can only hope that we are seeing at least part of the uh, enormous determination that I think the German government have shown and Germany is showing in actually doing something for the green economy and the green transition that we so desperately need. Based on what the EU Commission has proposed as well, of course. Uh, we have seen that, as, as of yet, that the government has said that what, close to 1 billion uh, euros have been uh, put into various um, initiatives in this budget. We ho I hope there will be more, and I truly hope that there will be a, a substantial um, uh, additional funding put into research and innovation in Sweden as well. 
because what we need to do now is continue. Uh, and then I just want to say that cooperation, I think that we need to uh, cooperate much more between public, private, academia, uh, civil society, but also uh, among countries. So I, I'm looking forward to continue the good cooperation we have between Sweden and Germany on the energy sector, building on, on the, the Swedish-German clean tech uh, uh, platform, for instance, and also find new ways forward when it comes to hydrogen. Although we have different starting points when it comes to hydrogen and how important it can be in the future energy system. I think slightly different, of course, between our countries based on where we are at the moment. But if we cooperate, we can, it could be a win-win situation, clearly, for both companies and for the governments. Thank you very much. I will now pass to Professor Messera from Bavaria, because for a long time Bavaria was we are looking. We were looking at BMW, at Siemens, at all the companies. Will it be batteries? Will it be hydrogen? We now know it's brother and sister. We need both, and we need even more alternatives. And of course, the question also was: hydrogen is it dangerous or not? So, how uh, do you go forward in Bavaria uh, in cooperation between the ministry and the companies and research? What is your solution? Thank you, Ambassador uh, Fordy invitation and for organizing this uh, important panel. Um, a lot of things are already said. Um, uh, I agree that we have to push, we have to get quicker in this uh, very important topic. Bavaria already started a long time ago with uh, huge research work in the topic of uh, battery and also in hydrogen. We started 10 years ago at the University of Erlangen and the Helmholtz Institute in Erlangen for uh, finding new solutions for storage of hydrogen. I can explain a little bit later, but uh, Bavaria takes uh, the, the, the chances and the opportunities of hydrogen, and we will um, will just go on on the whole chain of the, uh, of the way in, in, in hydrogen from the production to the logistic and to the use, and we all strengthen the research and we, we will put uh, the industry and the research together we founded last year in Nuremberg uh, a Bavarian center of hydrogen to, to force, to push these uh, activities. We, uh, we built an alliance, Hydrogen Bavaria, with about 80 uh, um, players, global players, uh, BMW, Linde, Siemens, all the, the, the important companies and small companies too, and uh, research uh, um, facilities and uh, the public together to develop new projects and to, to go on uh, with uh, the very important uh, point of hydrogen. Um, we actually started a huge uh, research topic in, in Bavaria, the high-tech agenda uh, from our minister president. And we get already this week additional money for the topic of hydrogen to put it to research, to start new professors uh, uh, to develop these uh, these things, we have a strong cooperation between the Technical University in Munich and the uh, uh, Friedrich Alexander University uh, in Erlangen to force uh, the the research work. Especially, I mentioned it before, we have a solution for a new kind of transport or storage of hydrogen. We have the classical things with high pressure or with liquid storage and the Professor Wasserscheid of Erlangen developed with, uh, uh, with his institutes a new system called LOHC, Liquid Organic Hydrogen Carrier, where the hydrogen is chemical stored on a normal uh, organic uh, carrier system. It's a normal oil we, uh, with the big advantage uh, that you can use the normal state-of-the-art technology. You can use bus uh, tank ships use the normal storage things, you can produce the hydrogen, especially in Sweden, um, and then you can uh, use the normal transportation systems to, uh, to, put the, uh, to get the hydrogen where you have to the industry and you just um, get the hydrogen off this carrier material. It's a promising solution where a lot of companies look. We are just developing the system also for the for for the uh, mobility sector for large trucks mm. and and train systems to directly use this uh, LOHC. Um, furthermore, we just started. Um, we are thank you 
We say thank you to the federal government that started um, a filling a system for cars so that we don't have the same problems with the uh, electromobility. Uh, ten years ago, we have no uh, 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 charging stations. And then the industry says, when we have no charging stations, we cannot uh, sell cars. And uh, the federal government set up um, a support program for filling stations for hydrogen. And we additional start in Bavaria just this day. So on, on 1st October, we start a, a new support program for filling stations in Bavaria for heavy trucks and buses that um, the industry can say, now we can deliver prototypes we can use. We can just feel the spirit uh, of hydrogen. So we do a lot of things. Important also to have the international programs that we are sure that we can't uh, uh, produce the hydrogen in Germany, in Bavaria. So there we want to be partner, uh, uh, can uh, deliver the technology and get partnerships with Sweden, Norway, Scotland, or other countries in the world to strengthen the cooperation that we can import uh, the, the new uh, of the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we are going new ways and finding your new way, you need research. So I pass the word over to Dr. Ruland, head of the German Academic Exchange Service. Floor is yours. Thank you so much. A warm welcome to all of you, and thanks to the German Embassy and to you, Ambassador Prince, to making this event possible. I'm not an expert in energy, but I'm an expert in international cooperation. And I think international cooperation, as you already mentioned, will play quite an important role to make this a success story. There are obvious reasons for that. Some of them were already mentioned. The one reason is we need more research in technology along the value chain from generating, storage, transportation, distribution, and application. And as all grand challenges, what we just experience at the moment with COVID-19, these grand challenges can only be tackled in international networks. So international cooperation plays a very important role. We have to think in a global context. And I think this meeting today is a very good start for that. The other thing you already mentioned, Germany will never be self-reliant. So we need partnerships desperately, actually. Um, we do have to import energy from any part of the world. But for this, we need international provider networks. We need a global market. And we need alliances with partners all over the world. How can we do it in the world of academia? I think there are many of instruments already available. A very important aspect is capacity building because we need experts all over the world on many different levels, on vocational level as well as uh, on PhD uh, levels and further. We could start to build up joint graduate schools, for example, with institutions abroad. All this is mentioned, by the way, in the strategy um, that Kaufman already mentioned. So capacity building, I think, is a very important aspect. The second one is we could think about joint centers of excellence as showcases to promote networks and to share the experience we gain all over the world for this new technologies we need. We already made a start. There are quite a number of feasibility studies already. There is a mapping going on worldwide, but now it's really time to build sustainable structures. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So international cooperation is so important. We have with us from the University of Lund, the rector Sylvia Schwag-Serger. Uh, so uh, I would ask her next, uh, it's, an, it's an online connection, which really we are stepping into a new era to be even better connected, even if you can't be there in person. And after that, after you, we will also have the Minister of Economic Affairs from Brandenburg, former uh, President of Technical University Berlin, Professor Steinbach. And we will also have uh, Professor Nielsen from Lulia, uh, who is governor of Northbottom, just showed us hybrid as the first 
carbon free steel pro uh, production company uh, and uh, also of course uh, earlier head of uh, K uh, kth in uh, stockholm so these three will be next the floor is you sylvia thank you very much i hope you can hear me yes yes Thank you very much, Ambassador Prince, for organizing this panel. Um, my name is Sylvia Schwarz-Serger. I'm Deputy Vice-Chancellor of the University of Lund. I'm a professor in research and innovation policy. I'm born and brought up in Bavaria, and I've been living in Sweden for 25 years. So I'm also personally very happy about this event that you're organizing. And I think I would just like to underline what has been said by many of the speakers, both the companies and the speakers in, in the panel, which is the importance of international collaboration for tackling our joint challenges, but also for scientific excellence. And that uh, in these uh, times, we cannot take international collaboration for granted. And we can also no longer take perhaps uh, collaboration within Europe always for granted. So it will require efforts and it will require um, uh, constantly working for uh, building context and mutual understanding. Uh, Germany and Sweden have a very strong academic collaboration. Uh, Germany is the third largest um, partner for Swedish researchers when it comes to co-publications. I would also like to emphasize that uh, German students, uh, Sweden is a very, very popular destination for German students. Um, I, I think this, this is one of our largest yes. group of students on our Swedish campuses. But as you all know, COVID has created problems for this. And, and this year, unfortunately, very few um, exchange students from any of the European countries will be coming to Sweden, uh, which I think underlines the importance of these events, such as the one you're organizing today, to make sure that we find ways to continue to collaborate. And I also think that the uh, Frau Dr. Rieland mentioned, for example, uh, joint um, graduate schools or joint degree or double degree programs are increasingly important because I think it is very important to expose young people to other cultures and to um, allow them to create partnerships and contacts with people that they can nourish throughout their professional careers, whether it be in academia or industry. Maybe just as a final point, I wanted to mention that um, you know, Sweden is one of the countries that is the most active in relation to the size of the number of its universities in the European University Alliance Initiative. Um, I think I learned this morning that we have 11 universities that have a collaboration with, with German universities in these alliances. Um, and this is something I think is very hopeful. It shows that Sweden is very interested and the Swedish universities are interested in strengthening um, collaboration with other European partners. And finally, I would just like to point out a very interesting initiative, which I think the German uh, Chamber of Commerce has had which was trying to help Swedish students do internships in German companies, which I think is a very interesting way to strengthen collaboration, as the Director General of the Energy Agency pointed out, long-term between industry and academia across countries. So um, on that note, I would just like to thank you for the invitation. Can I talk? So thank you very much for this comment. And we do have the European Council presidency right now. Our goal is also to include as many other European partners as possible. We look today over the list of questions between universities, so we will follow up with other embassies in Stockholm uh, to have at least four universities from Sweden with uh, several partners from other European countries to bring them in touch on finding new solutions in the technology field. We open the floor to questions from you, my dear colleagues. And as this was maybe a very fast presentation of the companies, we will, as I said, uh, share the film of the whole meeting with you so that you then can take note and follow up with the companies, hopefully. And also we will share the films of the trip of last week um, to uh, Norbotten and Westerbotten. We still have to uh, process this a bit so that this is a new way of maybe sharing information. So may I ask whether you have any question? Hans Kreisen, Northern Energy. Okay, please go ahead. So I had a question for uh, um, Dr. Kaufmann uh, regarding uh, uh, the green and the blue hydrogen uh, parts of your uh, strategy. In Sweden we have a fairly 
easy task. It's not very easy. We have a uh, energy balance consisting of around 140 terawatt hours of electricity. And uh, we have a lo another 120, 130 terawatt hours that we have to fossil fuels that we will have to change with electricity and hydrogen until 2045. On the European scene, the, the challenges is a lot more uh, tougher. There we have uh, right now around 950 terawatt hours of ele renewable electricity production. And we have around 12,500 terawatt hours of fossil fuels. That is 6,000 uh, terawatt hours of uh, oil, 4,500 something like that of natural gas and two and a half thousand of coal. Um, there will need to use um, um, CCS, CCUS as one part of uh, realizing our target goals. How does it look in Germany? What is your, uh, what is your, uh, how is, is your energy system composed? And uh, how are you thinking around uh, the green and the blue part of the, of the um, hydrogen? Um, yes, thank you for the question. We have to discuss it. Uh, so clear is that on the long run, we said on the green hydrogen as uh, the only, um, uh, yes, sustainable uh, renewable energy. Um, let's say until maybe 2030, we also have to use uh, blue, um, um, blue hydrogen for our system. We are aware of that. Um, I think we have to import uh, blue hydrogen, maybe from Norway or also from uh, Holland. Um, so we are aware that the huge amount of, green, of hydrogen we need in Germany. Um, we can't do it with green hydrogen at the moment. So uh, for, um, let me say, around 10 years, we have to also uh, look on the, on the blue um, hydrogen. But I think we don't produce it uh, in, in, in Germany, but we will import it. But to, to discuss all these things, we have uh, established a, a National Hydrogen Council with uh, 26 experts from, uh, poly, uh, from um, 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 stakeholders, uh, industry and also um, um, Verbände. Um, um, yeah. uh, and we have to discuss the strategy and the steps we will go on the next uh, years then. Okay, thank you very much. Let's now try Professor Steinbach. Okay, so thank you very much for the invitation and uh, special regards to to personal friend, uh, friends of mine, uh, to Frau Wulena and uh, to you, Anna. Thanks for inviting me. Um, just uh, two short statements um, of an outsider to this conference here as Minister of an area state of Germany, perhaps not as much as an outsider, but at least um, my colleague from Bavaria is representing us. Um, we heard about the European and the German national strategies, and uh, here it is not the place today to have a critical discourse um, on these papers in detail. But uh, one statement may be made here directly, and um, this is that we are 10 years behind the hydrogen applications and the hydrogen industry in East Asia. We have to admit this. And these big strategies bear the big risk to proceed at a rather slow pace. Okay, we have made significant progress during the recent two years. I do remember that when I joined politics two years ago, hydrogen was not on the agenda. Everybody did just talk about batteries. That has significantly changed and that gives uh, a big hope for the future. But in consequence, a number of area states have decided to make progress on a smaller scale in the field of sector coupling. We can act more flexible and faster, and we'll do that. And Brandenburg is one of them, and uh, which is perhaps a little bit of a surprise. Um, those who know a little bit about the culture in Germany know about the very special friendship between Bavaria and Prussia, but in that field, <laughs> uh, we do cooperate, and uh, I'm in frequent contact with Herrn Albanger, especially on the LOHC system, and the, uh, the possibility to have um, a fueling system established on that basis in Brandenburg. 
The second statement is that besides these activities, I would like to invite everyone to cooperation. I, I fully admit, admit that this is a highly competitive market, uh, but there are still open questions in the pre-competitive field. And here we should bundle, bundle resources. And uh, so I would like to express uh, here that at least our doors are absolutely open. Uh, for this kind of cooperation, and uh, that's why I also sent my representative uh, to join your party going to the north of Sweden. So open doors and let's get in touch. I think we can proceed faster if we do uh, bundle our uh, ambitions and resources. Thank you. Thank you very much for these very honest words. Yes, we have to leap forward faster. Let's try together. And the first little leap would be to see whether we can still get the governor from Norbotten, because a Norbotten is very advanced in many fields he, he might contribute to. We will still try it. And in the meantime, open to questions. We are, I also see Mrs. Kuschel from there. Um, whoever wants to speak, please uh, raise your arm. I, I have raised my arm. <laughs> Okay, please go ahead. Well, thank you so much. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, many thanks for organizing uh, this uh, conference on this very important topic. BASF is uh, one of uh, the larger uh, chemical companies uh, on this uh, planet, has been looking into uh, hydrogen production or green hydrogen production uh, for a long time. And uh, uh, as you might know, uh, the chemical industry uses large quantities of hydrogen as a reactant uh, in our production, uh, uh, for example, in ammonia synthesis. So it is very essential for many uh, sustainable energy carrier and energy storage applications in the future, like we have heard from some of the previous speakers. Uh, and we have various cooperation partners uh, where we develop new processes, uh, where we try to uh, go, go away from gas even, uh, which is mainly used today, uh, and to uh, produce hydrogen uh, with green sources and energy. Uh, on 10th of September, so just uh, five days ago, we announced uh, that we, uh, we have signed a memorandum of understanding with a Korean company in this area, uh, but this is BSF new business. So we are developing uh, uh, something new here on green hydrogen production. So I just want to say that we are very active in this field. And when people talk about hydrogen, uh, people do not necessarily uh, think about the chemical industry, but more about the energy company. Um, yeah. So this was just my short contribution, and uh, uh, maybe I can speak to some of the uh, participants later during the dinner. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, as we can't get the hold of the governor now, I just promise that you will get a film on the visit to Norbotten, and there you will hear him in person, and also uh, some of the researchers of Lulia University which is a great university with lots of expertise. I can really recommend to go up there and visit them. Are there any other questions by my colleagues? Yes, there was one question there. Mr. Fredericks, please. Yes, thank you very much. So I'm Frederick Andrian Sandberg from RW Renewables. I have a question to Robert Andrian. Um, so as we spoke about before, Sweden is very competitive uh, renewable energy resources, both onshore wind and offshore wind. Uh, and I think that we are quite excited to becoming an um, even a greater energy exporter to the rest of the continent to help them to decarbonize. I just wonder, is there any initiatives from the energy agency to uh, allow that um, some of these great ambitions in Germany or in terms of electrolysis capacity will actually end up in, in Sweden? Uh, not concretely at the moment as such, but we are looking into this issue uh, and see what, what we need to do uh, from a national point of view. Uh, but at the moment, I can't say that we are doing uh, that or, or this when it comes to that. Your question. My dear colleagues, the time is almost up. 
can I see one more? Ah, we would we would like uh, to have a photo of our third homes meeting. So if you could put your video on, because this will be possible if we are not speaking, and we will just make one photo. And we need to be in contact personally. And I hope we will soon be able to build up our personal contacts again. We keep some distance. We are now much more experienced. We need at least 15 minutes. We can be closer, then we have to keep distance. But we shouldn't just give up on being close because otherwise we can't uh, step forward together. We will be isolated. And what we have to do is we have to be one community in Europe. We have to have trust and we will be stronger afterwards with new ideas. Thank you so much for participating. Now there will be the photo, which means you all have to smile. Please smile. Thank you so much. The effect is that people think it was a good meeting because you're all smiling. <laughs> I, hope, I hope it was. Thanks a lot. See you next week. And bye-bye also to all those who visited from the energy field. Bye.